This is GM Daniel Naroditsky. We are watching the world champion Magnus Carlsen facing off against Anish Giri from the 2021 FIDE World Rapid and Blitz. And we have a Rui Lopez of Berlin. And will Magnus really go into a Berlin endgame? No, he will play the anti-Berlin. D3, Bishop C5. We have a trade of bishops. We have a trade of bishop for knight. And this is a very, very common line. Black gets that ruined pawn structure on the queen side. But in return, Anish gets the two bishops, white castles. And very often in these lines, we see opposite side castling, which is so, so interesting. So will Geary castle short? First, he has to defend that e5 pawn because Carlson could chase that bishop away from g4. And then the pawn on e5 will lose a defender. First, he goes h6, bishop h4. There's queen e7. I think Anish is preparing to castle queen side. That's going to make the game so exciting. Knight b to d2, supporting the knight f3. And there he goes. No hesitation. Geary castles queen side. We are going to see opposite side attacks in this game as Magnus will probably end up deploying his queen side pawns. Will he go a4? He can also go a3 and b4, pushing his chair in. This is a critical moment. White has to decide how to start the queen side attack. But I think in a blitz game, Black's attack is actually, practically speaking, easier because all Anish has to do is go g5 and then h5. And he's already threatening to go h4 in that position. This is really scary for White. I'm not sure about this opening choice for Magnus. Bishop back to g3 preemptively. And he puts more pressure on the e5 pawn, which he is threatening to capture. So the move knight d7 comes to mind, or bishop d6. It looks like Anish does have to defend that pawn. White is threatening to capture it with his bishop. And notice that the knights are defending each other. And the knight on, B on d2 is defending the knight on f3. So bishop takes f3 is never an issue for White. The other knight could just replace its cousin. Geary thinking about how to defend that pawn. I mean, of course he could sacrifice it and start pushing his kingside pawns, but that just seems a little bit too brazen, especially against someone like Magnus. Anish continuing to continuing to think this is a big moment. Bishop d6 and knight d7 is what I see. I think that is one of those moves is on the horizon. Knight d7 opens up a diagonal for the queen on e7. And there it is. Knight d7. That's a typical move in such positions. And now my guess is Magnus will start to set his queenside pawns in motion. White has absolutely no time to waste because now the stage is set for Anish to start pushing his pawns. He goes c3. So Magnus preparing b4 and potentially even preparing d4. Anish, before he pushes his own pawns, he decides to get his king over to b8. A uh, typical prophylactic move. That king is a little bit safer. And there's b4. Magnus starting to push his queenside pawns. Bishop back to d6. Lending more reinforcement to the e5 pawn. a4 by Carlsen. He's ready to play b5 and try to tear that queenside apart. And for Anish, I think he's going to start pushing his kingside pawns. He's got no time to waste either. There he goes. g5. What a fascinating game we, we have here. b5. This is... Classic opposite side castling action, c5, a5. Geary says, no, I'm not opening the queen side. Magnus says, oh, yes, you are. There's h5. Now he's threatening h4. Magnus going h4 himself. He pushes the pawn on the king side. That obviously weakens his own king side, but it greatly slows down the progress of Black's pawns. How is Anish going to respond to that? Is he going to play f6 and support the pawn on g5? Or is he going to bring a rook to g8? Rook d to g8 seems very logical because if white takes the pawn on g5 with his own pawn, and that might allow Black's H-pawn to march forward, H4. And you can't take the pawn on H4 because of the pin against White's queen. So there's a lot going on on the king side here, but another big decision to be made by Anish, who has to decide, is he going to defend the G5 pawn, or is he going to take on H4? He does take on H4. And now he plays F6, cutting open the pin, queen B3, unpinning the knight on F3, and getting the queen in position. I think Magnus is preparing to blast open the queen side with the move B5 to B6. That's a pretty scary prospect for Anish, who is about to do something on the queen side. Hesitating there. Not sure which piece he was about to grab. Rook D to G8 still on the cards. He has to play that move at some point in order to accumulate his own pieces on the king side. And he goes Rook H to G8. So he keeps the other Rook on D8, probably for defensive purposes. That's kind of interesting. I thought Rook D to G8 was more natural. Maybe it doesn't matter. Now, Carlsen can't move the knight on D2 because if Bishop takes F3. The king on g1 is pinned. Maybe Carlsen wants to go king h1 here just to remove that headache. But does he have time for that? This is a battle of tempi. Who strikes first? Will Magnus go b6? Will he go a6 and try to create a lobster pincer situation? Bishop g3. So he adds more beef on the g file. And maybe the knight on f3 is going to jump out to h4. Because black has a pretty big weakness on the f5 square. So Carlsen could try to slow everything down by getting his knight to h4. Bishop b6, queen a4 getting the queen out of dodge, and b6 is still very much on the cards as White has lined up two of his heavy pieces on the a-file. Magnus, very, very devious here. Anish hesitating once again. How will he keep accumulating his pieces on the, on the king side? Rook up to g4. 
And knight h4 is still possible. Magnus can go knight h4 and then get the other knight over to f3 and try to slow everything down as much as possible. The downside of that is that white is just not going to have enough pieces to attack on the other side of the board. And we see the cameraman come over. We see Carlsen. He's very, very calm. He always is, even in the most complicated position as he takes a pretty long thing here. Uh, he also has to reckon with the possibility of f6, f5. Notice that the rook on g4 is laterally pinning the pawn on e4, and there's a queen on the other end of that. So if black plays f5, Giri might be able to forcibly push his pawn down to f4. That would be a big deal. Knight h2, kicking the rook away from g4. I think that is exactly what Carlson was afraid of. Now, where will Anish put it? Rook g6 seems really natural to leave open room on the g-file for the other pieces, but maybe he'll bring it all the way back to g8. Maybe he won't move it at all. Maybe he'll sack the exchange. Anish taking his time here. Time trouble approaching. Rook. And back to g7. Carlson bringing his other knight to f3. I think that knight is going to h4. I think that is what Carlson is settling for. And he's leaving his other knight on h2 in order to prevent rook g4. Yes, knight h4. And c4 by Anish sacrificing a pawn. Opening up the c5 square for his knight. What an idea. So after d takes c4, he wants to go knight c5. And this is exactly what's happening. Knight c5. Queen has to drop back to c2. Now the e4 pawn is a vulnerability. That is a lot of progress there by Geary. He can recapture the pawn on c4, but then he allows the knight on h4 to jump into f5. This is exceedingly complicated. I don't know who's better, but it looks like black is an initiative here. Queen f7, getting the queen out of forking range of the knight. Now the stage is set and black can recapture the pawn on c4. There's b6. Geary takes it and he's probably going to go a6. He does. He closes down the a file. I'm not seeing too much action on the queen side for Magnus. Rook fd1. He tries to attack down the d file. Geary bring his, brings his bishop back. Will we see knight f5 from Carlson? No, he'll see rook d5 sacrificing the exchange using the pawn on c4 as a base. And what an exchange sack this is. If Geary takes it and he does, now knight f5 is going to come with great effect. The pawn on d5 is super dangerous as well. Anish has to be very, very accurate here. Brings his bishop back to d8. Targets the pawn on b6. There's knight f5. Rook g6 keeping the extra exchange is Anish. The other knight coming out to f3. Looks like Magnus has the initiative. Can Anish do something against these encroaching white, white pieces? But still, black is super solid here. That knight on f5 could potentially lose its base of support if black takes on e4. And Anisha's idea here is to go rook g4 and target that pawn on e4, which is holding white's entire position together. Magnus seems a little bit nervous here. It looks really nice for white, but white's also got a lot of weaknesses here. The pawn on b6 is weak. The pawn on e4 is weak. Black's rooks are still doubled on the g-file the moment that bishop moves away from g3. Black is crashing through. Knight h4 now. Rook g4 or rook g5. Nope. And he's dropping his rook back. And where's he going to move it? He's going to move it to g4. And Carlson forking the rooks with knight h6. But down goes the e-pawn. And down goes the bishop. Knight takes g3. This is looking pretty good for black. And bishop takes b6 with a check. And now Anish recaptures the knight. Now he's, the, he's up a pawn. And white's king on h2 is incredibly vulnerable. The queen might drop down to g4. Rook b1. Carlson tries to get stuff going down the b-file. Bishop c5. And the d5 pawn is also hanging. Carlson's position looks incredibly flimsy here. And he's down a pawn. And black is a pass pawn on a6. So any endgame is going to be bad for black. c4 defending the pawn on d5. There goes the queen. Geary is completely in charge right now. Queen g4. Rook b3. Carlson has to defend g3. Bishop f2. Not possible yet because of the queen on c2. But something to keep in mind. That e pawn can rumble forward. e4. That looks so strong. Geary threatening e3. Magnus is on the ropes. Queen b2 attacking b7. Geary ignores it. Bishop d6. Now Carlson could capture on b7, but after the king moves back to a8, I think there's going to be no way to defend g3. And if g3 falls, White's whole position collapses. This looks lost for Carlson. I don't see what he can do. And he's twirling the pieces around. He's getting nervous. Rook takes b7, king a8. Now the rook on b7 is also vulnerable. White's position is collapsing. This is lost for Magnus. He doesn't know what to do. Rook back to b3. Bishop takes g3. Geary's going to win the knight on h4. It's over. And Carlson resigns. What a performance by Anish Geary defeating Magnus with black. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to click the link that's popping up on your screen right now. This was GM Daniel Narodinsky. Hope you enjoyed this incredible game between Magnus and Anish Geary.